Hi, just a quick follow-up video to this web slash yeehaw 898D plus soul during station um, that melted down this SMD rework station I'll link to the previous video if you haven't seen it and we um, it sort of came to the conclusion that it was probably this fan fail because it has actually failed we can measure that and then maybe something happened to the control loop or or something it couldn't detect the temperature increase in this and didn't shut off the heater now one theory is that okay the fan blew so there was no air blowing over this element anymore and uh here's the little uh thermistor in here that measures the temperature and this is a um a ceramic insulator for the heating element here and because there was no fan uh, air blowing over it anymore um then the thermistor was detecting the wrong temperature and it kept pumping in the power but it's kind of near enough to still get radiant heat there it's all covered in metal and everything else so I don't think that was a uh, real issue. But anyway, um, a lot of people in the comments for the previous video said, aha, it is the SCR, uh, sorry, the Triac in this thing, which is um, here. And, and it's a BTA 16 uh, slash 600 volt uh, Triac, a pretty decent one from uh, ST, designed for, you know, medium power applications. Here's the uh, data sheet, and it looks like to be a genuine one, not some knockoff or anything. And a lot of people said, ah, the Triac failed short. And sure enough, if the Triac actually failed short, then there's nothing that the uh, processor on this thing could actually do via the gate control uh, opto coupler here it couldn't switch it off the, which could certainly be a photo mode a lot of people have said that oh they've seen other uh, yeehaw slash web uh, stations fail because of the triac but I actually measured the uh, anodes on the triac here and it's not shorted so we'll actually test this in a minute and it was kind of like too much of a coincidence to me that the fan also failed because I, I can't think of a mechanism that if the triac failed short yeah the heating element go up but how does that really kill the fan okay it could have melted it down it could have melted the uh, coil inside or something i don't know broken a connection something like that but the fan is like i can't see that happening and likewise I, it's kind of hard to see how a fan failure would cause a failure in the uh, triac like a short in the triac i guess maybe it's possible in some weird scenario but Anyway, so I've measured the Triac and it hasn't failed short. In fact, it seems to work just fine. And that's what we're going to have a look at today. We're actually going to test this and, spoiler alert, look, it's working. So it's not actually the Triac. And I've um, physically removed the uh, snubber network down here. I've removed the optocoupler drive and everything. So I'm just basically connecting up to the leads of the Triac in here. And this is basically what we've... Uh, the setup that we've got in DaveCAD, which you can download, by the way, on GitHub. I might have to link that in down below. You can get the official DaveCAD. Um, anyway, so we've got an AC mains transformer that I'll show you. Um, it's like a nominal six and a half volts or whatever. Uh, we've got a 50 ohm load here going into our triac, the, uh, the two anode pins of our triac, and the gates going off to a pot here that we can control the turn on, turn off time for each AC cycle and if you're wondering what a triac is this requires a whole different video because you can really go down the rabbit hole on these things but a triac is basically two scrs back to back and an scr is a silicon controlled rectifier also known as a thyristor but once again you can if you want to go down the rabbit hole and S uh, thyristor and scr technically aren't the same thing but you know for most purposes you can say an scr is a thyristor and vice versa and you can say that a triac is a bi-directional thyristor as well so you'll see a lot of these terms interchange you know though people will say thyristor in, when they mean scr or vice versa or they might say a bi-directional thyristor when they really mean you know when it's actually a triac and all that sort of stuff the terms for these things are actually uh, rather confusing but basically two scrs back to back like this and an scr is basically a diode like this with a gate so we'll just look at one scr like this and i'll just go over very crudely how it works it's basically as the name suggests it's a silicon controlled rectifier so it's basically a diode like this that allows current to pass through but only when you get enough gate current in here and these aren't voltage 
operational devices, they're actually current. So you need a minimum gate current to flow in here and then it latches on. It works like a latch and once you provide that gate current, you, you can actually have a switch in here like going up to the positive thing and you can provide that gate current through there and this SCR will actually latch on. So you can just a momentary button switch, you can press there and it'll latch on this SCR and the SCR won't turn off until such time as the uh, holding current uh, through here, it depends on the load and everything else, but when you, it'll keep maintaining that latch position until a minimum holding current where it'll actually just un unlatch and then you can restart it again. So quickly in a bit more detail how an SCR works and hence how a TRIAC works because the TRIAC's just two SCRs back to back, works on AC. We've got the equivalent circuit, in this case for a, a TRIAC it's working in one, what's called one quadrant of the TRIAC, but just think of this as the equivalent circuit for the SCR. I just got this from Wikipedia here and basically two regular bipolar transistor, regular bipolar transistors, PMP and NPN. And uh, hopefully you can see that, so the base current just flows through here like a normal NPN transistor like that. And once you provide enough gate current, of course, then current starts to flow through the NPN transistor. Basic, uh, you know, transistor operation. And then, of course, because you've got the PNP up here, it can conduct through its uh, base like that. And, you know, it's a bit confusing that we've got bases here when we're talking about NPN transistors and gates when we're talking about uh, thyristors. Not to be confused with gates on MOSFETs, which are voltage uh, you know, driven devices. This is still current driven. So it ends up flowing through like that. But once it does that, of course, it switches on this PNP transistor so that some current can now flow through here into the base to keep this thing switched on. So it latches on with this PNP transistor like this. So you only need to provide a little short burst of gaze current in here to latch this this two transistor circuit on and that's what an SCR does it actually latches on and I'm sure I've done a video way way back on SCR latch up which is a phenomenon in semiconductor structures inside ICs like regular logic ICs where they will act as an SCR and they'll latch up a similar sort of you know a thing happens with the output structure of transistors in logic circuits I'll link that in at the end up here somewhere. Check it out. Anyway, that's how an SCR works and latches on. And you can see that in this case, when the polarity reverses in an AC configuration, the current can't flow through here anymore. So one SCR inside the dual back-to-back -back triac, um, it switches off and then the other one can start to conduct in the opposite direction. Hopefully that makes sense. So they're very cool devices, SCRs and TRIACs, and as I said, a very big deep rabbit hole if you want to go into the dynamic uh, operation of these sorts of things, and it really gets a bit complicated. And the thing about a TRIAC is when you have two of these back to back in reverse orientation like this, you can use them for AC stuff, and that's why heaters like this, just imagine this is the heater here connected up to your 240 volt mains here, a TRIAC you can actually control the on and off cycles of that and every time that the AC waveform swats polarity like that you can actually, it, you get the minimum hold off, it drops below the minimum hold off current and it switches on and off. So you can actually, uh, by adjusting the current going in through to the gate pin here on both cycles, that's why on a triac with AC you have it connected across the AC source like this, you can actually vary the on and off duty cycle and you can control your load. So this is useful for all sorts of, you know, dimming applications for lamps, for motor control and heating elements. You can vary the amount of power that goes to it. So let's have a look at the uh, setup we've got here very quickly. I won't go through all the details, but I've got a uh, little AC transformer here that I built when I was, oh God, I don't know, I was 10 or something when I built that. It's, it's actually very, very old and it's just got a mains transformer in there and I can select the different taps. I will just use the minimum 6.3 volts um, AC and I'm using two decade resistance boxes here just uh, to simulate the upper half and the lower half to that because I just didn't bother with a pot. So we'll use those two and I've got the uh, scope 
The ground is actually up here because it's floating. I can do that. Beware. I've done a whole video on how not to blow up your oscilloscope. And uh, channel 1, which we'll see, which is the yellow waveform, is measuring the voltage across the load resistor here, which is essentially the current flowing through the triac like this. And the channel 2, which is green waveform, is just the AC input signal, which we're triggering off. So as you can see, ta-da! So as you can see, it works a treat. So this is the uh, input AC signal that we're actually triggering off. And this is the current through the triac. And you can see that our duty cycle is like, you know, it, it's somewhere in the middle. And if I adjust these uh, resistors here, we can see that duty cycle actually change like that. So we can actually control the turn on and turn off time of this triac. So it seems to work. And you can actually just see a little current pulse in there when it actually switches there you go look at that neat but anyway there, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with this triac yes it could certainly uh fail at like high voltage there could be some you know high voltage related issue that we don't know about but it definitely hasn't failed short and it does actually work as a triac so in this particular case, yeah, that's not the failure mode. So I, my money's still kind of on that. The fan failed and then something to do with the algorithm inside this thing or the measurement or whatever. It just it couldn't cope or whatever. I don't know. And it's melted down. But a lot of people have actually reported um, similar units from uh, Yeehaw or whatnot actually melting down as well um just yeah completely going like white hot just like uh this one uh david's one here and <laughs> just melting down so they just tossed it in the bin so whoop what fell something fell something in the lab fell down oops and it happens anyway so there you go um we've got some sort of failure mode there the triac is okay at uh, basic testing by the way i did actually try to measure the triac with my little um, M tester here, which does actually measure triacs, but it couldn't do it because this only, I believe, this only gives out like a couple of milliamps gate current, a couple of milliamps test current. So that's not enough current to actually turn on this particular uh, triac here. This one, I think, needs uh, 10 or 50 milliamps, depending on what particular uh, part it is or whatnot. So yeah, this um, is cool as these little, um, and this is capable of testing triacs, by the way. Um, you can, like it has a, I don't have another one here, but it can show, it can show up with like the triac symbol and everything else. So it can do it, but it can't do it, unfortunately, if you've got a triac that needs more than the base current, uh, the base current, gate current. <laughs> It's not an NPN rubbish. This is a triac gate current uh, required. So yeah, in this case, it just doesn't have the juice required. And for those who want to see the little uh, blower fan here, I've just taken the uh, uh, top cover off here and it, 24 volts, it uh, certainly doesn't work. It's cactus. There we go, bonus teardown. If you haven't seen it, it's got the uh, four coils with the permanent magnets around there and then inside there just got the ring of permanent magnets so that they can control the magnetic field and make that well alternate the magnetic field in a circular fashion and make the motor spin and there it is i had to uh pry that out of the back of the case and it is ridiculously simplistic look at this there's <laughs> There's nothing in there except, oh, there's one cap there. Is it a cap? Looks like there's one cap there. And what else? <laughs> then we just got our driver IC up there. Can we get a number on that? It's going to be some weird thing you probably can't get a data sheet on, I'm sure. There you go. Ha! What do you know? You can get a data sheet for this thing. This is actually pretty cool. Um, BCD, uh, but I got it from Diodes Inc. So I guess they were bought by uh, Diodes Inc. And it's an on-chip hall sensor as well, which of course, uh, you know, <laughs> to know the position of the thing. Um, it, it's really cool. I like it. It's for dual coil, brushless DC motor, brushless DC fan, revolution counting, speed measurement, um, all that sort of stuff. So it's got an onboard driver. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Fairly crude, but cool device in that it has a 
Um, and there's the magnet, you know, you've got to mount it in the right orientation, of course, trap for young players if you're using the Hall Effect uh, sensor in it. And there's the uh, magnetic flux density curves um, for all you uh, magnetic aficionados. And that's all there is, like two coils. Um, so they must have opposite side coils as two coils. So that's how they're configuring this. Neat. And of course, for this low cost fan, they went, oh, we don't need this diode rubbish. We don't need these and this RC, these RC filters down here on that. Nah, don't worry about that. She'll be right. Just hook it up to the coil. Bob's your uncle. So that's just crazy uh, simplistic. I, <laughs> ones I've um, seen before are much more complicated than that in terms of uh, all the drive but i guess okay just do it in one chip it's you know ultra low cost but anyway that puppy has failed and whether or not it's the uh it, that was the cause of the issue or whether or not i don't know something else went wrong on the board and killed it i i don't know i think it's just likely to have like just uh failed somehow just um mechanically or electrically failed anyway i hope you found that video useful and please let us know in the comments what you think about you know how this thing failed or whatever hope you liked it if you did give it a big thumbs up as always discuss down below in the ev in comments youtube comments or ev blog forum catch you next time <laughs>